proudly we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled... Assignment, Ghosts. This is the story of a young WAF reporter who finds out that getting the story behind the story can lead to unexpected results, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, are you a service veteran? Then listen carefully. This message is for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will surprise you. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put those skills to work to your best advantage and at a higher grade and higher pay than you may realize. Write or visit your Air Force recruiter for the special prior serviceman's folder. You'll see why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Assignment, Ghost. <laughs> Oh, Janet. Yes, Sergeant. Will you come here a moment? Something I want to talk to you about. Okay. What's up, Sarge? How long have you been with us now? About six months, isn't it? Yes, and don't tell me it's six months too long. Now, why should I? We got a citation for being the best Air Force base newspaper in Germany, didn't we? You played your part in helping us get it. Oh. No, it's something else. I should like to try a feature story. Feature? Sergeant, did I ever tell you you're my favorite managing editor? <laughs> I'd say I'd like to try one. Good. How do you feel about ghosts? Ghosts? Yeah, ghosts. Real, live ghosts? I don't know. We haven't met. I never met one either. I don't... I don't think I feel anything about them. They leave me cold. Oh, no. <laughs> I suppose that's uh, what a ghost is expected to do. Yeah, it could be. Oh, look, kidding aside, there's an item that crossed my desk about a castle in town not too far from here. It has a reputation, so it says here, of being haunted. <laughs> well, are you sure it isn't a prefabricated reputation? How do you mean? Oh, you know, a setup just to attract tourists. Well, maybe, but this castle, Schloss Hohenstein, is off the beaten path. Now, look, here's what I want you to do. Contact Herr von Weissenrod. Oh. He lives there. Find out the background of the legends and the history of the castle. Oh. Ghosts or no ghosts, it might prove interesting. Okay, Sarge. When do you want me to go? Tomorrow morning. Hope you come up with something. Oh, don't worry. If any ghosts are there, I'll dig them up. Even if I have to become a grave digger. <laughs> My first feature. Something I'd aimed for ever since I took that journalism course in high school. Even if it did seem a rather unusual subject, I was going to make good on it or bust. So I hopped the first train to the town of Oberfeld the next morning. A few hours later, I checked in at the hotel, located a phone, and called the castle to say I was coming. By the time I located a taxi driver that would take me to the castle, and after a ride of about an hour up narrow, twisting roads into the mountains... It was beginning to become twilight. Are we there yet, driver? Uh, no, in a few moments. Ah, yeah, yeah, you can see it now. I opened that black rock of a mountain, huh? Oh, yes, I see it. <laughs> so that's Schloss Hohenstein. Yeah. Uh, very cheerful looking. Say, what kind of a person is this uh, Herr von Weissenrode? Oh, I do not know him much. One sees little of him in town, and uh, few people ever visit the castle. Mm. Doesn't sound like a very sociable fellow. Yeah. Here we are. I'll let you off at the gate. Oh, can't you drive me up? What, through that pack of howling dogs? <laughs> Never. That will be five marks, please. It was a long hike up the path to the castle. It stood black against a dull twilight of the sky. The gloomy old gatekeeper with his pack of howling watchdogs eyed me suspiciously and then waved me on. 
It all seemed to me like something out of an old movie. I climbed the path to the castle door. The sound of the ancient sculptured knocker echoed and re-echoed throughout the house. The huge wooden door was aged and weathered by centuries. And in the corners, dust-covered webs spun by generations of spiders lying in wait to catch their unsuspecting victims. Oh. Good evening. Is something troubling you? Oh, uh, good evening. Uh, no, uh, I'm out of breath. I suppose I'm climbing the path. Yes. Come in, please. Uh, thank you. Now, you are... Airman First Class Janet Fraser, U.S. Air Force. And I am Friedrich von Weissendorf, and my wife. How do you do? I am happy to greet you. Sit down, please. Now, what is it you wish? Well, as I said on the phone, I'm interested in the history of your, uh, your picturesque castle. Yes, its history. Perhaps you could tell me of its beginning? The beginning? Yes, and about the ghost. Hmm. So you would like to know about the ghost? Yes. Isn't the castle supposed to be haunted? I am sorry to disappoint you, but there are no ghosts here. Is that not so, my dear? That is so, Friedrich. To some people, the past turns into ghosts. For others, it lives. I will tell you the history of Schloss Hohenstein. It is a great one. Oh, I'm sure of that. It began in the year 783 A.D., the ancient manuscripts tell of how the Duke of his duchy went into battle against the neighboring Duke. While the two armies were locked in an embrace of blood and death, the Duke's horse was cut down. But his vassal, a humble blacksmith named Gunda, snatched up a broadsword and fought a way to escape for himself and his master. As a result, the Duke awarded him a baronetcy and this grant of land in gratitude. It's a wonderful story, Herr von Weissenroth. There are many. Uh, tell her about the time the Duke visited here, Friedrich. In this very room, where you are sitting, in the very same chair. Oh, well, do not be alarmed. It happened many years ago. Oh, I wasn't. I, I thought... Of course. This room is exactly as it has been for centuries. You know, there are times when I feel as if... But to get back. Imagine, if you can. In a place like that, imagination can run riot. So it didn't take much for me to be able to appreciate his stories. But I was struck by the way he told them. From his rather cold manner upon receiving me, he was now enthusiastic, completely caught up in his recreation of the past. So much so that he seemed to be hardly aware of anything around him. Those were days of chivalry, honor, tradition. When a man was honored not because of what he possessed, but for what he was. I remember well when Baron Osmond van Gunda in the year 1056... You remember? Yes, I... I mean... My dear, it is getting rather late. It is. But it has been so interesting. You are so intelligent a listener, Miss Fraser. I am? I mean, I am. That is... I have a suggestion. I have hardly told you all you should know. Why not stay with us for dinner and perhaps overnight... I could then continue. Fine. I'd be glad to. And how did you enjoy your dinner, Miss Fraser? Very well, thanks. <laughs> Rather unusual experience for me. And how is that, my dear? Oh, well, eating from this, it is... A real gold dinner service, isn't it? Yes. It is almost 600 years old. It was part of the dowry of the 10th Baron's wife. She was a daughter of the rich Margrave of Neuenroth. He surely must have been rich. And this huge banquet hall, it's all... Well, I don't know. Yes, yes. Would you like to come with me for a stroll? The Schloss Hohenstein Gardens by moonlight are an impressive sight. Why, yes, thanks. I would like it. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. It is indeed. Now, if you would step over here to this bar. Oh! Well, well this is right on the edge of the cliff. Yes, from here it is straight down 2,000 feet. 
It is called Liebersprung. In English, that is Lover's Leap. It, it sounds romantic. Yes, romantic, but sad, very sad. It was here that the young Baron Wolfram stood with his loved one, the beautiful Griselda. It was the night before their wedding. They embraced for their last kiss. Then, hand in hand, they stepped to the edge, closer and closer. Down in the valley, they saw what we see now, a dark gloom of silence. Do you see? Yes. They stood there for a moment, and then... They jumped? Yes, they jumped. For a moment, he stood looking at me as if he didn't know who I was. As if he was returning from a long journey. But in a moment... Yes. They put an end to their earthly love in order to pursue a higher, more ethereal love. Now, let us return to the Schloss. I have to admit that interesting as the tour of the castle gardens was, I was relieved to get back. But when we returned, there was a surprise waiting in the person of a young, good-looking man. Miss Fraser, my nephew, Baron Karl von Gunda. Oh, cut the Baron stuff, Uncle Fritz. How do you do, Miss... Uh, well, hey, wait a minute. You're in the Air Force. <laughs> well, yes. Well, what a surprise and a treat you are for sore eyes. Uh, speaking about surprises, are you the Baron of... Yes, Fritz? he is the present owner of Schloss Hohenstein. He is? Well, let me get my notebook out. Your uh, notebook? Oh, yes, I'm a reporter for my base paper. You're on and... a base paper? Say, that's great. Uh, you can probably tell me a lot of things I'd like to know. You see, I'm very much interested in the Air Force, especially in the field of rockets. Now, I've heard there's a matador installation around here somewhere, and I've, um, I've been trying to locate it. Now, how about helping me out? He was a very disarming young man, and there was a lot about him that was very puzzling to me. I had scores of questions to ask him, but when he hit me with that about the matadors, I clammed up. He went on talking and asking questions that seemed a little too searching to me. So at the first opportunity, I pretended I had a headache, excused myself, and went to the room they'd given me. And as soon as I got there, I got on the phone. Do you think there's something suspicious going on there? Suspicious? It's a regular hotbed. Yeah. Well, look, I've got to make a trip to Heidelberg tomorrow. I'll drop in on my way. Okay, sir. And until I get there, don't get any ideas about doing anything. All I want from you is a story, no dragnet oh, stuff. Don't worry, I'm no heroine. I've got nearly all the story I want. Find any ghosts? No, Sarge. No ghosts yet. I had a hard time falling off to sleep after I hung up. I suppose I was pretty much excited. However, it, if I'd have known how far wrong I was in what I said about the ghosts on the phone, I would never have fallen asleep. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Assignment, Ghosts. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. If you're an ex-serviceman, you may be able to qualify for the United States Air Force and in a grade that will be a pleasant surprise. The Air Force needs men skilled in certain important fields. So put your service earned experience to work to your best advantage as a member of the Air Force team. Make the credits you've earned toward a comfortable retirement pay off. For complete details, write or visit your Air Force recruiter. See what a return to the service as an airman can mean to you. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Assignment Ghosts. More coffee, Janet? Uh, please. Where are you at, Uncle? Oh, they've eaten already. Uh, look, tell me, you're Baron Karl von Gunder, the umptious and owner of this castle. Yet you talk exactly like an American. How come? <laughs> it's very simple. I am an American. What? Sure. Shortly after my mother passed on, my father visited the United States with me. Oh, I was just two years old, and it was right before the Second World War. Well, when Hitler marched, my father decided to remain in the States and become a citizen, which he did along with me. Oh, I see. Well, during the war years, and up until a couple of weeks ago, my aunt and uncle took care of the castle. A few months ago, my father passed away, and I became legal heir to the property and title. And that's why you're here? No, yes. 
Not that I particularly cared about it. It's just that my uncle and aunt wrote me a lot of letters, almost insisting that I come and take it all over. So, more out of um, curiosity than anything else, I guess I decided to come just to take a look. And now that you've seen it, what are you going to do? I don't know. I've had other plans for my future, but... Well, now, after listening to my uncle and aunt... What did they say? Oh, they've been telling me about the history of the von Gunder line, you know, the tradition and all that stuff, and they say it's my duty to keep the line intact. I'm sort of in the middle. Mm. Well, I suppose you are, but it seems to me... I wonder who that is. Oh, that's my sergeant. Uh, excuse me a moment, will you, Carl? Hi, Sergeant Allen. Good morning. Glad to see you haven't been kidnapped. Uh, look, Sarge, um, maybe you better forget what I said last night. I think I goofed. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's okay. I suspected as much. Hello. Oh, huh? Sarge, now, and this is Carl von Gunder. He owns the castle. Oh, glad to meet you. Same here. How about having some coffee with us? Fine. It's time for a coffee break anyway. Hey, this is great. You know something? This is the first time I've ever had a chance to talk personally to an Air Force Master Sergeant. Well, I guess we're sort of scattered out here in Germany. Oh, Carl isn't German, Sergeant. He's American. He's just here visiting his castle. Oh? I was wondering. You sure sound like an American. Well, I hope so. Oh, well, here we are. Have a seat, Sergeant. Thanks. One cup of java coming up. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I've always been very... Oh, good morning. I see we have another guest. Oh, good morning. Sergeant Allen, this is my uncle. Herr von Weissenrode. How do you do? How are you? Now, as I was saying, Sergeant, I've always been a bug on things technical, and one of my hobbies, uh, which I'd like to make my work, is uh, rocket propulsion. Oh. What's the matter, Janet? Oh, uh, nothing. Nothing. I, I just remembered something. Oh. Yes, Sergeant Allen, I'd, uh, I'd like to find out what opportunities there are in the Air Force for a guy like me. Well, Carl, I can tell you that anything in rockets is going to be really something. Uh, you take the rocket propulsion technician course given at Chinoot Air Force Base. In this, you learn how to maintain liquid propellant rockets. Sitting there in that ancient dining hall at a long oaken table that was scarred by the spurs of medieval knights, and listening to talk of rocket missiles and ships, well, it was somehow incongruous. Carl's uncle, too, seemed to be affected by it, but in a different way. He drummed his fingers on the table and turned restlessly in his chair as he observed Carl's enthusiastic reactions to Sergeant Allen's descriptions of the opportunities in the Air Force. Suddenly, he stood up. Excuse me. Sergeant, I have a suggestion for you. Oh? Well, uh, sure. I have shown your associate, Miss Fraser, the castle, and I should like to do the same for you. Won't you join me? Well, that's nice of you to offer it, sir. That's why I sent Janet here, frankly, to get the facts. Besides, I have an appointment in Heidelberg at, uh... Oh, my gosh, is it that late already? I better get going. Oh, that's too bad. There's a lot I would have liked to have Maybe asked. some other time. Goodbye, Sergeant Allen. Goodbye, goodbye. It's been nice talking to you. So long. I'll walk you to the jeep. Well, Janet, you think you have your story? I don't know. I don't think I have. Maybe by tonight. Okay, you stay here until you have it, then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Right, so long. Take care. I went back to the castle and spent the rest of the morning in the library assembling my notes. I just about finished when... Um, come in. Excuse me, Janet, are you busy? No, no, I'm just about done. I wish I could say the same. What's the matter? You seem depressed, Carl. Oh, maybe I am. I was feeling pretty good there for a while when the sergeant was here, but now... What happened? Oh, my uncle got hold of me and started in on me. I suppose he's right. I don't know what to do. You certainly are in a spot. But if I were you, I'd think about it a long time. What do you suppose I've been doing? It's constantly on my mind. I'm sorry, Janet. I didn't mean to load my worries on you, but you... Well, you're not only easy to look at, but you're very easy to talk to. Well, I could say the same about you, but I won't. It might go to your head. Janet. Oh, never mind. Ah, here they are, my dear, in the library. What do they do, follow you around? Well, sometimes I wonder. Oh, my children, we have something for you both. Isn't that so, my dear? Yes, something very nice. And uh, for you, Miss Fraser, it would be interesting for your newspaper. It will? Well, then lead me to it. Now, just come with us, upstairs to the wardrobe room. That is where we have stored all the clothes that have been handed down through the years. We follow them. And in a few moments, we're standing in the midst of a whole array of 
beautiful gowns, resplendent uniforms, suits of armor. It looked like a room out of a museum. It is impressive, yes? Oh, very much so, Herr von Wiesenroth. Perhaps if you ask me. Oh, what is it, Uncle Fritz? Your aunt and I thought perhaps you and the young lady would like to try on some of the garments. Like this gown that was worn by the lovely Griselda. And this velvet doublet that her betrothed, Wolfram, wore. Say, look at that feather plume. Real snazzy, huh, Janet? Mm -hmm, yes. And this gown. I have never seen such delicate embroidery. I I I'd love to try it on. Well, sure, why not? Capital. Come with me, Carl. A and you, Janet, my wife will show you to the room where you can change. And that was the beginning of the end of this whole strange affair. After I'd put on the gown and turned slowly in front of the mirror, watching its fine lines flowing about me, I began to see what the old man meant. Reality and unreality were somehow mingled, as if they'd become one. My dear, you are beautiful. Oh, yes, a handsome couple. My children, well, you wouldn't think it foolish of two old people if they asked you to have a little party? Oh, well... I don't mind. Carl doesn't. Why, okay, glad to. I could stand some fun, even if it is 14th century style. Let's go. Dinner that evening in the old banquet hall was in the royal style, with all the accoutrements, except the servants, the roasted oxen, and large assemblage of guests. There were just we four in the candlelit room, a room in which time seemed to have no meaning. After eating, we retired to the ballroom. And there, while the old couple played music on the phonograph, Carl and I danced among the shadows in the huge, empty room. It was an uncanny experience, but I played along because I felt it would be a good ending for my story. As the evening wore on, though, I forgot about the story. Janet, you are a most wonderful dancer. Thank you, sir. And uh, you're lovely in other ways, too. I am? Yes. Would you like to stroll in the garden? All right. Perhaps a breath of fresh air? Of course. We can go through this door here. Ah, oh, here we are. The Liebesprung. You know about this? Yes, your uncle told me last night. You know, these clothes were once worn by the Baron Wolfram and his Griselda. Yes, I know. It's beautiful here at night, isn't it? Yeah, if you listen, you can almost hear the night speak. You know, today, tonight, I've come to realize what my uncle and aunt mean about the schloss. It, it, well, it's a living thing with a spirit even as you and I. If I were to leave it, it would probably die. Die? Carl, don't you no, think... No, it may sound foolish, but it, it could be so. And you are staying? I think so. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Carl, listen, you, both of us are caught up in a spell. You should go away from here, from this place with its ancient memories. Janet, I'm crazy about you. Carl, Carl. Hey, Janet, listen. Like this. Yes, like this it was. The night the Baron and his lady stood here for the last time. Uncle Fritz! Theirs was a love not for this earth. Too grand, too noble, but not too noble to be relived again. Take her in your arms. Yes, take her. One last time. Be not afraid. It is the only thing to be done. Come here. Come here. That's it. Now, look down into the darkness below. Down, down, closer, closer. And now... No! 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 If I hadn't come to my senses and screamed, I'm sure Carl and I would have followed in his ancestors' footsteps because the old man's strangely compelling voice had drawn us to the very edge of the precipice. One more step and... Well, in the morning, I'll leave this place. A place that has led me to believe that there can be such a thing as ghosts. Ghosts of haunted memories that cannot and must not be relived again. 
Goodbye. Goodbye, Schloss Hohenstein. Think you'll ever have any regrets? Oh, no. It's goodbye forever and no regrets. I suppose it's goodbye for us, too. Oh, no, it isn't, because you'll be seeing me in this man's Air Force after you get rotated back to the United States. And after I can find out how to become an Air Force rocket technician. I know where you can get that information. Where? At my base. Lady, you've just hitched yourself a ride. Come on, let's go. If you're a veteran, chances are you know about the United States Air Force reenlistment policy and the opportunities it offers to all former servicemen especially those with technical experience and backgrounds in critical skills. But here's important news you may not have heard. The Air Force has now liberalized its policy to bring you even further benefits. Here are some of the important advantages. A wider range of skills is now accepted. There's a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments. Also, a paid 30-day delay in reporting if requested. And think about this. If you qualify on the basis of an aptitude test, the United States Air Force may be able to guarantee technical training Yes, guarantee you this even before you enlist. So it makes good sense for a veteran of any service to inquire about this new, liberalized Air Force policy. Contact your nearest Air Force recruiter now without obligation, of course. See why we say, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.